What if you could make a bet that had 30 to 1 odds in your favor? That's called asymmetric risk. We're going to look at that today. First, I want to show you the chaos that's happening, the economic weakness, the deflationary pressures that are hitting up against the inflation. All of that in this video today. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. My name is David Quintieri, and I have been looking into the economic data for well over a decade, bringing it to people and getting rid of all that jargon so that it actually makes sense. The other guys out there, they will in fact explain things to you that you do not need to know. Phillips curves and things that are complete nonsense. I only give you that what you need to know. Here we go. First things first, Target has become a target for major thefts and is taking a huge chunk of their profits. Look how ridiculous this is. Target is on pace to see $1.2 billion in profits go up in smoke due primarily to organized retail crime. You've probably seen the videos yourself. A bunch of people walk into the store. They just grab anything that they can grab. They just take it all and they run or in many cases just walk out. Nobody stops them. Nobody tries to. People record it with their cell phones and nothing happens. Not, nobody's prosecuted or anything else. So the number one problem here is that there is no prosecution of that. Absolutely. They know that's not going to occur. They walk right out. The second thing is that there's a lack of prosperity because if we had more prosperity, you wouldn't even have these events taking place. How many times do you see in the big cities where there are lots of people who are on different drugs and things that are going? I heard uh, from the little market that I go to, the lady told me that somebody basically busted open that front door, glass door. I heard from another uh, hairdresser that told me they busted the door as well. And in, according to their cameras, it's just a guy, you know, just out, out of their minds. People are losing it today and it comes up all over the place. Okay. These are just some anecdotes that I thought would be interesting. Look at this. U.S. supply chain woes shift and persist in 2023. A lot of different things are happening. Okay. Rates for trucking, ocean shipping, and other transportation tumbled after the U.S. consumers shifted their spending from big ticket items like furniture and BBQ grills and big screen TVs to travel and other entertainment. However, there's still a bit, a uh, pretty big mess out there. One of the problems that we find right now, by the way, I don't know where this whole trucking cost plummeting because the last time I sent over some units, I think it was 2000 units. It was still priced roughly about the same, which is four times higher than it was two years ago or three years ago. Okay four times higher. So the plummeting, not true. I haven't seen that anyway. Okay. Uh, when I bring it in 2000 units, 4,000 units at a time. All right. It, it certainly adds up. It's a little sting. Okay. So that's just one thing, but we look at this and have to understand what does this mean? Well, if all the costs have risen, well, number one, the consumer is dealing with that. They're either taking it in stride and saying, okay, I'm just going to pay for that. The business is uh, receiving less profits and that has a knock on effect, a domino effect. Things slow down. You can only like there's a ceiling on everything and companies of course are trying to push the maximum they can. They always do. Commercial real estate prices in the U S have fallen for the first time since 2011 office and apartment building values drop. Moody's economist Zandi sees a bigger price declines coming ahead. Ah, uh, you know, we can argue about that. Here it is. You could see that over the last several years, I mean, it's basically just been up the entire time since the financial crisis, housing crisis. And now we've started to see this come down. Um, this comes at a time in which there's way too much retail, particularly in the U S no matter where you, you don't have to drive two minutes before you get a mega mall. I mean, it's ridiculous. Why do they need so many malls? And it's the same stores in every mall, all the chain stores. And by the way, the stores don't have too many people in them, probably way too many employees. You know, no, none of them want to help you. That's a whole different story. Um, and you know, most of them are rude anyway, but the point, and by the way, do you find that customer service people, customer service people are rude today, at least more than let's say 10 years ago? Let me know. Comments below, please. Let's talk about that. 
Um, what I can see is that's way too much retail and the office. Yes, people are going back to the office and already have, but it's a hybrid system. A lot of the back office employees, a lot of those who are just, you know, simple jobs, nothing too extravagant or what have you. They're not manufacturing positions. They're not like, they don't really need to be in the office. They're doing hybrid. And that means maybe they work from the office three days a week. They work from home uh, two days a week or, or four in one or what have you. That's what's happening in a lot of these financial companies. And why would they do that? Because they want to give their employees nice perks? No, it's because they went from having, let's say, 10 floors in a building down to five floors in a building, and they're trying to save on real estate. It's a simple matter of fact, okay? Americans have, and by the way, they're going to get rid of those people as soon as they can. Anyway, Americans have had a sudden change of heart about buying a house and only one in five think that it's a good idea. Now that's the soft data. There's a difference between what's called soft data and hard data. So soft data is like surveys, like, hey, are you going to be buying something in a house right now or are you going to wait? And then you look at the actual hard data, which is like how many sales took place in this given month or in the previous month and last month. That's the difference, okay? There's like sentiment and there's like actual facts. And the sentiment is pointing one way and the hard data is pointing the other way. It's like a huge divergence right now. Unusual. But that's the way it goes because it's like, I don't want to, but I have to. That's what the feeling is. So that's what we're seeing right now today. So be careful on the data that you are receiving. Is it hard data or is it soft data? Almost 90 million American adults struggle to make ends meet census sets. About 38.5% of households face difficulty in survey period. More households turn to credit cards to cover their spending needs. I've got another video entirely breaking this down. So either that has come out just before this one or it'll be the one after that. Uh, but this is a big thing. 90 million Americans. Okay. And then we need to talk about this next aspect, which I think is very serious. And I want to talk about asymmetric risk as well. But this is the first one. I thought it was funny. In his first public appearance since SVB's collapse, the former CEO, Greg Becker, is asked to defend his trip to Hawaii and whether he'll forfeit $1.5 million bonus. These people here live in a different world than you and I. And to think that the guy is going to get rid of his bonus, he might. But to, to try and like grill him and, you know, you're not getting to the point of all of this. It, it's, it, it doesn't matter. You could talk about this CEO and that CEO and this executive or that guy, and you're missing the point entirely. The boom bust cycle is created by the central bankers. If you get rid of Jerome Powell and put another guy in there, nothing changes at all. It's because the structure is designed in a way to help the few at the expense of the many. And these people that come out here and try to tell you a few things, oh, you know, I know I'm the guru. Listen to me. Am I, you know, I have 3 million YouTube subscribers. Listen to me. You're missing the point, okay? Because these guys, they don't get it. They achieved a level of success and they can't even see where, you know, what the reality is anymore. Or maybe they don't want to because it's not good for business. Anyway. Tighter credit will keep retail sales on a downward path. And we could see that, um, you know, banks' willingness to make consumer loans, that is something important because it shows us that the banks here, they're concerned. They don't want to take on risk. And at the same time, they have increased what's called loan loss provisions. So they are essentially saving like a rainy day fund. Okay, let's put the cash here just in case we need it because the expectation is people won't be able to pay their bills. What does that tell you? What does that tell you? Wall Street touts Japan stocks as topics hit the highest since 1990. Wow. So after over 30 years, the Japanese stock market is starting to go back to where it was. Fantastic. And people are going to say, this, is, this means Japan is fantastic. Japan is amazing. Look, look. The guarantee, like the, this is the biggest failure nonsense thing. And yet they are continuing, like, I mean, they don't even own their bond. Like the, it, there's no investors there. Why do you think it's going up? It's because the government and the central bank keep buying it. 
It's a fake. It's a fraud. It's a fugazi. You want me to say it like that? It's garbage. Okay? It's worse than these fake gurus who have never done anything with themselves except created a course, sold, convinced people to sell in that through ads on YouTube, and then, you know, made a bunch of money, and then, you know, they're pretending that they know what they're talking about anyway. Debt ceiling tail hedges are cheap lottery tickets, Bank of America says. This is it. You stayed until this part of the video. Thank you very much. Options on stocks and gold imply a 30 to 1 payout if 2011 repeats. So the debt ceiling problem, we can learn from that. We could take from that and you could see it for yourself. Some people, they're going in on this trade. 30 to 1 payout. If you want to know more about this, link in the description is a Bloomberg article that highlights all of this. And you could see it right here. Okay. Derivatives tied to the assets uh, that they're referring to here. This is Bank of America. Okay. Just showing you purchasing hedges now with options on the S&P 500 and gold would stand to yield profits more than 30 times the upfront premium should negotiations break down and the market reacts like they did in 2011. I'm not saying that it's going to be catastrophic and then the US dollar is no longer the reserve currency. Oh my goodness. No, I'm just saying if 2011 repeats, that's enough to give you 30 to 1 on your money. Now, where else do you find this type of information? Okay, I'm giving it to you right here. If you want to take it, it's there for you. That's up to you. Okay. So these are the guys. Anyway, I won't go down that road. Money managers are similarly unfazed. In a Bank of America survey released this week, 71% of the pros said they expect a resolution before the government exhausts its options to fund itself. And so that's where we're at today. Okay. That's the situation. We don't know exactly what's going to happen, but the markets are saying, no, it's going to be resolved. And historically, they usually push this. I mean, this happens every year. So it's not a real surprise. However, this is what's called asymmetric risk. Kyle Bass was uh, known for that. If you read um, Money, Master the Game by Tony Robbins, he actually interviewed Kyle Bass. They talked about this. Um, great book, by the way. And I just think that for a lot of people, they want to make a big risk, big, big bet. Hey, maybe it'll pay off. This is something that you should be looking at. I'm not telling you to do it, but I'm just telling you that, you know, don't just do what other people say, like look into it, look at these things. And you can see the big outlier in this circumstance here, because when you have new housing starts and housing completions down significantly over the last couple of years, um, in particular, I would say the new housing starts, you've got at the same time employment construction or residential. So there's so many people employed in this category. At the same time, new housing starts down. I mean, there's there's something not corresponding. It's an outlier. It's an anomaly. And we should be just paying attention to that as well. I'll keep an eye on that for you. Okay. Plunging tax revenue accelerates the debt ceiling deadline. So this is just adding more fuel to that fire. Okay. Of the 30 to 1 odds. And then Lebanon tanking economy, increasing cash, increasingly cash based. I thought it was hilarious. The World Bank is saying, oh, well, if Lebanon is if Lebanon is all going all cash based, this means that more money laundering could take place. I mean, you got to be kidding me. You got to be kidding me. I mean, this is nonsense. The currency has no value anymore. What are they what are they even talking about? This is the type of stuff they want you to know. They want you to be worried about this. And at the same time, 90 million people are struggling to pay their bills. Do you not see? Do you not get that? That's the connection. That's what we have to do. Look, this video right here, the banking crisis and the debt crisis coming together is actually based on the statistic that I pull up in here, worse than 2008. So what I advise you to is check this video out right now and I'll see you there.